Number one. First, first of all, these microphones are a fair distance from you. Do you think you can lean yeah. forward a bit? Yeah. How does it feel to be number one? Um, well, a shock and very, very, uh, very elated. It's a really good feeling. But we've been in the middle of a tour for about four weeks in the States. We took a week off in England, so we really hadn't had time to sit back and realize what's happening. What's your reaction to the death of Jimi Hendrix? Well, I didn't know anything about it until half an hour ago, and I'm still stumbling around trying to believe that it, it happened. You know. It's a tragedy. Yeah, it's a tragedy. What's your reaction to the fact that he died from an overdose of drugs reportedly? Well, that was that, that's what makes it hard to comprehend that the whole thing happened. You know. What? Why? Well, it's just it's just a, such a shock when a statement is made like that, especially at 10:30 in the morning. Do you, in your songs, advocate the use of drugs? No, not at all. No, not at all. Not at all. The, the group that was number one, the Beatles, uh, found that just this past week had their songs quoted by Spiro Agnew. Would you, would you like that to happen to you? I really don't know. I haven't seen Spiro at any of our concerts yet. I thought so. he was a model for a wristwatch, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> well, that's the sort of thing you have to face, you know, if you're going to be successful. Really? Well, I'd like to meet him. Does he, does he come to the concert? <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the difference between you and the Beatles, as far as your music is concerned? Well, I don't know. I suppose you'd, you'd equate the two by saying that they're both statements of what's going on in the music scene today. But we're, we're completely unlike the Beatles, are we, in thought, in our music? Well, how, do you, so how, sure about, feels, so. how do you feel about the Beatles? I think they're great. They've, they've done some fantastic statements. Have you taken, uh, have, have they been in any way um, kind of uh, the leaders for you even, or have you emulated in any way uh, any of No, not for myself, not consciously, no. I think they've Obviously been... one's heard what they've done because it's, it was pumped through the media all the time. I think the, uh, the fact that they, they got through to so many millions and millions of people has been an inspiration for every performing group of, in England, and I should imagine in the world, you know, the fact that they got over so much to so many people. Would you say at this point in time that they seem to appeal to a slightly older group than you do, and that you're getting the, the younger kids coming up? Um, I should imagine that it's the same for every group who achieves a success on a large scale. You can't always apply your success just to one age group of people, because the, the, the bigger you get, the more wide your, you know, your limits become. Do you ever hope to uh, achieve the order of the garter <laughs> and have your predecessor? <laughs> What's that, uh, the Ken Cat? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the MBE. Oh, that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I don't know. No, I think they've given up on the people like us for that, haven't they? Well, after one was returned, I should think that... Talk a little louder. Move your mic. Move the mic and project a little bit. You're talking to people in the audience. Yeah. Ah, oh. oh, good, good morning. <laughs> so there, right? I'd like to ask another question about the <laughs> Jimi Hendrix death. Is that there has been this very, very 
close association in the minds of a great many people between drugs and rock music. And when someone like Hendrix, who was such a great star, dies and it says drug overdose, everyone sort of says, aha, you know, I knew it. What do you think of it, that type of thinking? Uh, well, that's being put into people's minds so much by uh, medias that, you know, get through to a lot of people like, you know, press, like this one, yeah. press and television and things like that. As soon as one, one person on the rock scene makes an example of himself, then uh, I think it's the usual thing for everybody around to sort of attach that to everybody else in the business. So, and therefore, the whole thing becomes quite warped, you know, the whole idea of drugs and rock. And I think rock is, is enjoyment and complete, you know, loosing the in inhibitions and just really having a good time. It doesn't really have to apply to drugs or something. What, what Did you know Hendrix, by the way? No. Did you? Uh, yes, I met him a few times. But I'd like to say, what about Judy Garland and Edith Piaf and people like that? that are supposed to you know, appeal to the older generation. You know, I'm sure there's some tie out there with drugs, isn't there? Do you feel that uh, perhaps this image projected about rock groups is uh, created by the generation gap, by older people who perhaps don't understand and find that this is the easiest way to make themselves understand? Mm, yeah, probably. I'll give you a straight yes on that. <laughs> I'll only elaborate. Well, do you, in, in, in terms of this, do you feel that uh, raw groups have not been given the proper uh, oh, feeling, the proper image by of the Of course, they've never been allowed to get across. Uh, I suppose le less or so in England because the media is pretty biased as to, as to, to rock music. And uh, as far as television coverage and, uh, and radio, it's virtually swept under the carpet and it's given very bad viewing times, not peak hours at all. So you that do, speaks for itself, really, doesn't it? You do message songs. What, what is the message that, that you're trying to get across, if, if each of you might answer? Forget about what everybody tells you you're supposed to be doing when you're listening to us and enjoy yourself. How's that? There's no message? No, just a sort of a message of enjoyment, you know. The whole, the whole idea of, of music from the beginning of time was for, for people to, you know, be happy and to enjoy themselves the best they can. Unfortunately, in a lot of places that we've gone to, trying to, you know, sort of convey a little of that sort of feeling, uh, the audiences have got the message, stood up to applaud, and got banged on the head with sticks and things like that, which is very unfortunate, really, because I'm sure those people with the sticks go home and, and hang around the room to Glenn Miller on a Saturday night or something like that. And they feel good, you know, so why can't, you know, why can't it extend to the children? What about you? Uh -huh. Thank you. Can we get back to the question? Um, then I care to know. Well, what about some of the messages that are in the songs? Do you, are, are you in favor? They reflect your own feelings. Yeah, they do, yeah. But there's never been anything that, uh, any message that really announces anything new or listen to this or you must do this and that, you know, because I don't think that, you know, it's our you job to do that. You should no. anyway, no. If we are in a position where we, where there's a lot of people listening to what we say, then try and, and marshal thought would be probably the wrong thing to do. Mm. I have a rather obvious question, but uh, perhaps you'll indulge me. Uh, there's a phrase going over like a lead balloon, and I was wondering whether the <laughs> Zeppelin had more of a chance than a balloon in your mind. What was, what was the origin of that name? Yeah, it's just, it, it is a play on words like that. Led Zeppelin has the same connotations as Led Balloon has over here. Do you think that uh, in view of the fact that you've unseated the Beatles, that uh, you know, the Led Zeppelin may be uh, in a better position than the Balloon? Mm. <laughs> well, uh, well, at the moment, we hope it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Could I ask you one other question about Jimi Hendrix, apart from the, the way that he died? What did you think of him as an entertainer, as a musician? Uh, brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Mm. He was completely fresh when he came along, you know. The first time I heard one of his records, it was Hey Joe was the first record I ever heard. And it, the, the atmosphere on the record was something that you can really capture on, on wax, you know. It was an incredible sound. <coughs> what kind of an entertainer was he? Well, I think he was the same as, as what we've just said about entertainment, really. He'd go on stage and put every iota of everything that he'd got inside him at the time into what he was doing, and the audience felt that. Yeah. You know, the reactions that you know of, that he received, are indications of that.
How does the reaction to your, <coughs> your group differ in the United, or does it differ in the United States to uh, England? Are you a smash over here as well as over there, as much of? Well, there's more people here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. Therefore, it's a you know it's a proportional difference, really. It's probably the same, but on a different scale here. Did you expect this kind of um, uh, appreciation of your of what you do? And not to begin with, because not to this extent. No. We knew we were appreciated by the fact that people were coming along to see us in such great vast numbers, all over the place, England and the continent and wherever. But no one expected this. Certainly not. <laughs> Does the name of Madison Square Garden have a certain ring to it in New York? You've never appeared there before. Yeah, ball games. No, I don't know. <laughs> and that sort of thing. So we managed to do away with that idea. Right. Well, the Stones didn't play in a revolving stage. No. They played in the proscenium setup, which is... Yeah, but Blind Faith played there before. Yeah. Uh, on those lines. Sure. What do you think of Madison Square Garden? You haven't appeared there yet, but you're going to. What do you think? I think it's football. Yeah. Yeah. Is it football? Because they... oh, that's a bloomer, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they don't have many rock concerts there, though, do they? So that's what one has to think of because that They're takes top hockey. priority. You know about ice hockey? Well, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I saw a guy on one of those pictures everywhere. I mean, advocating what a great game it was. <laughs> 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 you know, that happens. Those sticks, you know. What do they sharpen mm. them with? <laughs> <laughs> I really, you know, I'm just. Do you think that rock music is a gentler sort of sport? Sure, there's not so much brawl needed, is there? That's all brawl. <laughs> <laughs> what other question? How, how do your record sales in the United States compare to your record sales in Europe and England? Well, obviously, it relates to how many people the populace, doesn't it? Well, and as it's a smaller populace in, in at least England. Proportionately, how do they? Proportionately, I should say, it's about the same. About the same, it? yeah, because the, the second second album that did it very well here has been on the English charts for about 47 weeks now. So, um, although it doesn't sell on the large scales, you know, that it, that it does over here, it's still an indication of, of what, you know, of what's happening. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, we've got it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see all the I remember one... We worked for him two weeks again. Well, it would be what it was two years ago. Maybe that's what he really means to say. <laughs> all right, we are okay? He's exhausted. Yeah. Okay. All right, I want to, I want to get uh, Hendrix, I think, Hendricks, I think.